the call to covenant thinking or living above the fray, as I call it. And the fray is this impossible life of living among bottom feeders, bottom livers, who doesn't even look up to see that there's a new world above. It starts with our father Abraham. Goes through the lineage and time of the patriarchs, ending up with Jesus Christ and the incoming and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But it starts with the father Abraham, which is the secret, which is the revelation that God has sent us. That father Abraham was the father of the faithful. And his characteristics are like the who's who or what you need to have to think elite thinking. Abraham had elite thinking. He was a forerunner of a man who consciousness and mind, spirit and body was wholly given over to God. And what happened when a person wholly gives himself over to God as opposed to keeping himself back and living a life as a bottom feeder. Scripture is very clear. to say either you be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, God said he spit you out your mouth. So we don't want lukewarm living. We don't want to abide by lukewarm principles or guidance. But we want to be guided by the word of God that brings us to elite thinking. Not better than, but as like. And that's the difference between this elite thinking. This elite thinking, this elite thinking lines you up so that you shine, that you shine, you have a glorification that comes from God and you reflect his principles. So Abraham started with obedience. He left home and friends and he followed the call of God. You can find it in Genesis 12, verse 4. And then from that obedience, he moved into unselfishness as he gave, you know, provisions and ample room for Lot. And so part of elite thinking, top bread thinking, covenant thinking, is that you help others, that you give um, these principles away, like I'm telling you, because there's room on top. The world wants you think, to think that the room on top is shaped like a mountain that is the, is the base of all these people It comes to a point. But the truth of the matter is that the world that God wants us to live in is a plateau. He said there will always be a poor among you. There will always be poor thinkers. There will always be poor givers. There will always be people who are poor in obedience. He said, but there is a mountain top, a plateau that all can reach if they fall underneath the guidance of God. And so to raise you up into a greatness that God has for you, we have to begin to think like God. And God gave us examples on this planet of men who have given themselves wholly to the Lord. So it was obedience or selfishness. Um, Abraham was full of courage. Abraham was full of benevolence. Abraham was in... Um, he refused to let this world dictate how his wealth came. And so when people try to give him money, he refused it. So he was incorruptible. Um, Abraham was mighty in prayer. And then Abraham, of course, was the father of our faith. He was willing to give up his only son, Isaac. So I ran through these principles real quick. I'm going to go over them. I want you to jot them down. One. He was obedient. Two, he was unselfish. Three, he had full of courage, man. Um, four, he was benevolent. Five, um, he was unwilling to be conformed to this world. So he was uncorruptible in that essence. Um, six, he was mighty in prayer. And then also, he was had faith towards God. These are the beginning principles. As you begin to meditate on this thing, you will get a sense of greatness rising up. That God wants to take you from the world of the bottom feeders. He wants to take you from the world of the crabs and, and, and those things that feed off the bottom, off the top. But he desires for you to be on top of the heap. But he wants you to do that with him in mind. With him being the first one. With him being your all in all and your object of your affection.